Hi everyone, this is part of the real project, create point of sale from scratch to finish. And this is part one. Do you know that the project requirements from the client are important? But it's more important if you knew how to translate that into module requirements and also see what project requirements didn't tell you. I said the word module requirements because I'm using user story mapping technique, but not using it the right way. But it can be a good intro for you to user story mapping. So, what is user story mapping? Basically, it's like an outline of the project. It also shows the flow of the program, but not in detail. Anyway, this is a very useful technique for working alone or working on a team. After getting the module requirements from project requirements, you can see what project requirements didn't tell you. Therefore, you can dig deeper into what the client really wants. So, here's the project requirement sample. I'm the client myself, so I hope I can represent them. Maybe you want to pause it first, download the project requirement document from the video description, read it, and get back into this video. Do it just like you have just received requirements from the client. Pause the screen. Are you done? Let's continue. We'll make this into module requirements. For this, we can just use a free cloud website to help us. Its name is Jira. Jira is an agile project management that is designed for teams. But I use it alone and it works well too. I put the URL in the video description. Because this is a real project tutorial, I won't cover the Jira tutorial here. Please visit my other video about it. I also put the link in the video description. Let's create a new project. Use a scrum template and just use a team managed project. Fill in the project details. My coffee place name is The Real. So I'll name it The Real POS for now. Just use DRPOS for the key. These fields can be updated later, so I don't mind it if I'm not naming it for the right scope. When I already know the scope of this project, I can just rename it. There's a backlog, board, roadmap, personas, user story map in our project. We will use user story map for our purpose. Let's read the requirements and make them into user story mapping. First, create epic. Just treat epic as the big module kind of thing. From the condition, we can clearly see that it has products. Let's make the module. Continue to read. It also has product categories. Then I have employees. Cashier, offer some beverage. It's all leads to sales, right? Let's create sales orders for that. I also have customers. Customer has their address. Okay, as an owner, I brought the ingredients and anything that we can call raw materials, and it has its own categories.
as a customer, they can pay for the order, so we need a payment module. Okay, stop it for now. From what I see, almost all of it like for the backend side. Let's rename our project. I'm thinking that the backend side will be a website and it can also work well on mobile browsers. That way, even if we don't have the app, it's still manageable from the website. Let's continue. From here, the client is clearly want to make sure that they can track the raw materials that they bring to the coffee booth. I think it goes to the module. Hmm, okay. A little problem. I can't add it because it's too close to the edge. Actually, I can scroll to the right by, but I will show you that we can add it on the previous module and we can just drag it into the right. So, what's the right name for the module? I think it will be raw material control. And clearly the owners wants to have report. Since it's already explained what he wants, we can just add the sub module below. Add sales turnover below the report and sales order. Hmm, what's the difference between sales order and sales rate product? I think this is not different. In this situation, we must ask the client what he really wants. Make sure if it's the same thing. If yes, we can just merge it like this. Let's rename it to sales by product. Client requests that it's better to use chart to show the sales. Let's write it down in our sales by product module. Next, raw material usage. I skipped just for a while about the employee's needs. See, there's a possible future update. Let's add it first. Again hard if we are too close to the edge. Create brands and drag it into the left. We can skip for now for the customer app because it's not in the back end side. Let's analyze a little what the project requirements don't tell you. Basically, almost everything is not written out. We have employees and an owner. So, we have authorization, right? Let's create an authorization module. It has submodule login by username. Logout. Reset password. change password. Next, as the owner specifically said that they can see the report, it means the employee doesn't. Then, 
there's roll access. What next? Let's see the product. Basically, we can add, update, and delete products. Then what we need here is a basic CRUD. What is CRUD? It's an acronym that refers to Create, Read, Update, Delete. I said basic there, just to let us know that at least we need the basic operation. Because there may be some advanced CRUD letter that integrated with other modules, but we don't have to know it now. It's the same for product category, employee, customer. I think it's almost fixed that there's only one address for one customer. Let's write it down into a submodule of customer. Raw material and raw material category also need basic CRUD. It's quite different for the raw material control. It's because there's a record of what we brought to the coffee booth, and sometimes we need to take back some items. Also, there's stop adjustment for something that we don't know. For example, I made a mistake that I thought I gave 50 cups, for example, but in reality, it's only 49. If you're confused about export and import, it's just the basic function that we will use to add raw materials to the coffee booth and also to return the raw material. If we don't use it later, we can just remove it. There's also a basic module that every application has, which is called log. I don't know if I need this complexity right now or not, but let's write it first. Let's analyze more. If you remember, we have delivery and payment on sales order, so we need delivery status and paid status. Get back to the document. Delivery status can be pending, process, uh, process and delivered. And paid status can be not paid and paid. <laughs> Let's add other features for sales order. Add sales, update sales, cancel sales, and of course, it can see the list of orders. Let's read this one clearly. As an employee, they can see the summary of what they need to make, meaning the beverage or food that has its status set to process. Okay, I think it's quite clear. We need one special view for it. What will we call this thing? Again, this is where you will communicate with the client and get approval for the module name or the view name. After a lot of thinking, I'm just going for processing order summary. Remember that you need to make sure your client agrees with this, or you will need to change the name later. It might seem a little issue, but don't underestimate these kind of things. Next, easily take orders to the shop, choose the shop name or customer name, and then take orders while walking around. Okay, I think this is more like a UI problem. We can skip it for now. Last on the document, synchronize with the internal apps. Other employees get notified when one employee takes an order. Okay, basically that's a notification module. Let's take a look at the payment module. 
it isn't clear at all how the customer will pay and with what payment processor. You already knew the drill, don't you? Ask the client about it. So as the owner, I want the payment using cash. I'm from Indonesia, so I will put a payment processor in Indonesia, which is OVO, GoPay, Shopee Pay. Brands module also need basic crud. Hmm. Doesn't even have to be added now because it's a future development. Let's remove it for now. We're almost done with this. Let's take a look once more and place the module in the most realistic order. Just like the flow of the program. Product category, then product. Raw material and raw material category. It should be raw material category, then raw material. Hmm, if we see authorization, role access, employee, we didn't see the owner there right because employee and owner type should become role access therefore i change the employee module into the user module let's drag it near the role access module as a programmer it's hard to know what the client wants here as a programmer I see some connection between product and raw materials. We need to ask the client how far they want. Do they want to connect their product and sell us with raw material control? If we see the project requirements, we know that the client wants it, but it is always safe to make sure, because even a little connection makes more validation and logic exist there. And that means the complexity is increased. In this case, yes, I want the complexity. So let's add, add or set raw material for the product. There should be a customer first. Then the sales order can exist. Let's move it. Here I think that we don't need to complicate things with the customer address module. Don't forget, this is the time you need to ask the client what he wants. Does he need the customer to be able to have multiple addresses? I'm the owner, so I'll answer this one. I don't need multiple addresses. So let's remove that. After some thinking, I choose to remove the future references. In this case, it is the branch module. We'll deal with it in the future. After every cell, there's a notification. So let's move the notification module to the right of the cells order module. Don't forget, we'll be using web-based here, so we need to be able to see the notification list and what notification will be arrived on the mobile phone. The most viable option is by email. Let's use it for now. And if there's a reset password, we need an email, right? Let's give a note on our authorization module. Analyze once more.
I think it's more fitting to use update delivery status instead of delivery status. It's the same with the paid status. Move the payment module to the right of the notification module. Okay, I think this is good for now. But remember, software is something that is always changeable. So don't think this is fixed. We must be ready to change something here and there. What good with this is, we already have the big picture of the project. We can count on it, make a work plan from it, and also track our work from it. That's it that I will share it for you in this video. Hope it is useful for you guys. Don't forget that this is part of the real project, create point on sale from scratch to finish. And this is just part one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the bell button so you will be notified when the next video is up. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.